Sonata number no. 29 for flute and timpani is the official designation for a particular piece of music that affects its listeners in abnormal ways. Even though flute and timpani are listed in the name, it has been played throughout history with similar versions of the instruments. No one composer can be attributed to the piece's creation since it has repeatedly appeared in unrelated populations and times. The first suspected occurrence of a rendition of Sonata No. 29 is recorded in Magyar oral tradition, referred to as Ehezesh Fuvola, or the Starvation Flute. The story goes that a traveler would visit villages and share the music with the villagers. When asked about where the piece came from, the traveler would say that a tall shepherd taught it. Those in the village who heard the music would become ill, reluctant to eat, cold, weak, and permanently frightened or anxious. Invariably, the traveler was driven out. The village Taltos, a kind of shaman or wise figure, would remove the music from the villagers' minds over time, healing them. Similar oral accounts appear in Cherokee, Zulu, and Maori cultures, but the first documented occurrence is found in the Florentine Codex, a 16th century document describing in depth the history and culture of the Aztec people, written by the Franciscan friar Bernardino de Sahagan. The document was intended to aid his fellow clergy in understanding and converting the Aztecs to Catholicism. Included in the text is a section describing an Aztec ritual designed to remedy illness from the Moca Cuatlapizali, or the fearful flute. The Codex describes symptoms of people exposed to the fearful flute, similar to those described in the oral accounts mentioned earlier. Additional documented accounts appear more frequently after the 16th century, all over the globe. The most definitive account took place on Saturday, October 23rd, 2004, at the University of Carthage in Tunis, Tunisia. A multi-act concert was held on campus, and the penultimate act was Sonata No. 29 for flute and timpani, composer unknown, performed by Cornelius Al Newman and Roman Lawson. After the sonata concluded, there was silence in the auditorium. The final act was cancelled, and the concert stopped. Over the next few days, attendees went into hospitals, reporting symptoms that coincide with those of both the Florentine Codex and the earlier oral traditions. Al Newman and Lawson were last seen bound for Belgium, but never arrived. They vanished from all public record. These symptoms of exposure to Sonata No. 29 progress in stages. During and immediately after the rendition, the listener experiences acute stress reaction or psychological shock, characterized by numbness, dissociation, and unawareness. Recurrent cold chills are common, but not universal. Within 24 hours, the numbness and dissociative properties of the shock fade, replaced by a reduced or even eliminated appetite. In 38% of victims, this progresses to full anorexia nervosa. Within 72 hours, the unawareness aspect of shock fades, anhedonia sets in, coupled with severe general anxiety. After a week, 22% of victims experience auditory hallucinations of voices singing or humming the notes of the sonata. After two weeks, 100% of victims experience the aforementioned auditory hallucinations, with an additional 15% also reporting visual hallucinations. No common theme has been determined for the visual aspect. Every patient appears to pull images at random from different points in life. After a month, victims will frequently hum or sing the melody in the sonata, 
tapping along to the rhythm section. Urges develop to seek out instruments and replicate the performance, as does an abhorrence to the same idea. Beyond this point, symptoms remain the same. Quiet and solitude exacerbate the symptoms, while ambient noise and company alleviate them, though never completely. A notable exception to the company of others reducing symptoms is when the others are also victims. When in each other's presence, victims' symptoms are magnified well beyond normal levels. The magnification increases with the addition of each other victim in each other's presence. In the months following the concert at the University of Carthage, the student attendees sought a variety of treatments, mostly at prompts from acquaintances. Most successful was audio therapy, comprising exposure to massive amounts of other music. Particular styles varied in effectiveness with the therapy subject. Daily therapy in the form of new and varied music was found to drastically reduce exposure symptoms. Other, less effective treatments included antipsychotic medications and antidepressants. No treatment was able to eliminate symptoms entirely, and no cure for exposure to Sonata No. 29 was found. That changed, however, in late 2007. Subjects seeking treatment for exposure were advised to come in for an experimental new technique. They were not given any details of the procedure, however, being told it was classified. However, they agreed anyway, desperate as they were. The students were each sedated for an indeterminate period, and when they awoke, symptoms were gone, as was all memory of the music. While grateful, the students were perplexed at the absence of information provided on what was done to cure them. Their inquiries were denied, however, and they were told only to return immediately if they felt any resurgence in symptoms. To date, no such return has been documented. Different theories have been proposed as to the mechanism of the Sonata's effects on the subjects. These are primarily neurological, with the most prevalent being that the specific pattern of notes and rhythms causes a kind of destructive feedback loop in brain activity, though why this would be the case for the same musical structure in subjects with vastly different musical tastes and memories remains elusive. More data could be found if the actual composition were recorded but the only sources remaining for what the piece sounds like are recordings of affected students humming and tapping the rhythms before the memory erasure. A video made during the performance of Sonata No. 29 on October 23, 2004, vanished after the fact. Inquiry into the video's demise has yielded no answers as to who did it or why. Similar symptoms of exposure to Sonata No. 29 have been reported in Osaka, Japan, as of the beginning of 2019. The source of the performance has yet to be identified. Medical veterans from the Tunis incident fear what may happen if the Sonata's rendition ever makes its way to the internet. The most baffling symptom of the condition, symptom magnification in the presence of multiple victims, could devastate humanity as a whole if just a single video of the music made its way onto YouTube for all the online world to see and hear.